and of course in our number one position the most expensive comic book of all time hello to all of my comic book super collectors Dante D here and welcome to the channel where we talk about comic books and other geek stuff before we get into our video today just wanted to remind you all that we are on the road to reaching 10,000 10,000 subscribers so if you are not already subscribed please consider subscribing to this channel it's a wonderful community and would really love to have you if you're looking for a special shout out let me know that you've subscribed liked and shared and in the next video i will be sure to mention your contribution to this channel this is the channel you're looking for just just see what i did there you know it was like obi-wan doing Jedi mind trick. Yeah. In this video, I would like to give a very special shout out to Lovell Lucas Jr. and Will Grant, who correctly identified all four random quotes that were scattered in last week's video. Thank you guys for participating. We've been having a lot of fun. I know a lot of the viewers have been having a lot of fun playing this game, so we are also going to continue that today. If it's your first time here, you don't know how the game works, at some point, four random points, during this video, I'm just going to be saying some random quotes. Make sure you stay tuned until the end of the video so you can get all of those quotes and get a very special shout out next video. So today we are talking about the top 20 most expensive comic books of all time. And trust me, there are a lot of them. These are the top 20 holy grail comic books that most of us average collectors can only dream of owning. These are the highest prices that the following comic books have ever sold out. Now, this all just comes with a little bit of a caveat. These books do, are not worth specifically the prices that are listed here. The books that are going to be on this list were most often sold in high grade. So if you happen to have one of these comic books that's in you know medium or lower grade, it may not be worth as much as you are seeing in this video today. Suspense Comics number three, which in 2015 sold for around $173,000. Now this is the only non-superhero comic on this list, and the reason why it is on the list and it's so valuable and rare for collectors is because this was a, a comic book that most newsstands and uh, mom and pop shops back in the day in 1944 did not want to carry because of the offensive nature of the cover. If you take a look at the cover here, there are all these Nazi symbols. And in 1944, we were just wrapping up World War II. So most people did not want to stir the pot, making it one of the rarer comic books from the era. We have Showcase number four, which in 2009 sold for around $179,250. Now, for those of you super collectors out there, you'll know that Showcase number four is a very significant comic book because it is the book that pretty much started the Silver Age of Comics and initiated the superhero revival that we saw in the Silver Age of comic books. Action Comics number 13 in 2011 sold for a whopping $185,000. Like that's as much as a house. I can't, I can't believe how much some of these comic books were selling for. But the reason why this comic book was is very sought after by collectors is because this was Superman's first battle with Humanite. And in this issue, we also got a centerfold ad that advertised Superman number one. I don't have to do anything I don't want to do. What I want to do is have an American cheeseburger. All American Comics number 16. This book once sold for $200,000. And this book is most famous for being the first appearance of the DC hero we all know and love today as Green Lantern. Action Comics number 10 in 2011 sold for $258,000. Now, I don't know what the significance of this comic book is because I couldn't really find any major significance, but it is an early Superman appearance. So that in and of itself is a reason why a collector would be willing to pay for a comic book like this in high grade. Avengers number one, $274,000 it sold for. And you all will know, this is an iconic cover. Every, most people, even who don't collect comic books, know this cover because this is the first appearance of the Avengers that we all know and love today. I mean, 
the Avengers are like a multi-billion dollar industry pretty much with, with all the movies and, and merchandise. So the very first time they appeared was in this comic book, which debuted in the early 1960s. Wiz Comics, number two. Back in 2012, Wiz Comics sold for $282,000. And the significance of this comic book is that it is the first appearance of Captain Marvel, who we all know today as Shazam. Now, there was a big legal dispute between Fawcett Comics, who at the time uh, published Captain Marvel, and DC Comics. There was huge legal proceedings, but at the end, DC Comics ended up getting the rights for Captain Marvel and eventually renamed him as Shazam. Fantastic Four, number one in 2011, sold for $300,000. Now, Fantastic Four, number one, is one of the most significant books coming out of the Silver Age because not only is it the first appearance of the Fantastic Four, but it is also the comic book that pretty much started the Marvel universe in the marvel age of comics in 2014 the incredible hulk number one sold for three hundred and twenty six thousand dollars and you're probably wondering how the heck could the incredible hulk number one sell for higher than avengers number one and fantastic four number one well for those of you out there who know a little bit about comic book history early issues the first six issues of Incredible Hulk number one were actually very, very rare. The first Hulk run only ran for six issues because people really didn't know what to think about a Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde type of character. And, you know, kids were scared of him. So they ultimately ended up canceling the Incredible Hulk, which makes these early issues very, very rare. And this issue also is known for being not only the first appearance of the Incredible Hulk, but the issue that portrayed Hulk in grayscale yeah that's right he wasn't green back then he was gray captain america comics number one sold for three hundred and forty seven thousand dollars now this is also a very iconic cover it is not only the first appearance of captain america but this is also an iconic cover coming out of the golden age of comics which features captain america punching adolf hitler in the face Nigma, Edward, Edward Nigma, you hired me personally. We've never actually met, but uh, your name was on the hiring slip. I have it. For $350,000, some lucky collector walked away with Marvel Comics number one. This is also a very famous cover that uh, features the earliest representation of the human torch but the true significance of this comic is that it is the first marvel comic that was ever published i was really surprised to see our next one so high up on the list but next up we have tales of suspense number 39 which is the first appearance of iron man this book sold in high grade in 2012 for 375 thousand dollars now the popularity of the iron man movies without a doubt played a part in the popularity of this character and the reason why this book is so sought after. In 2010, Flash Comics number one, featuring the first appearance of The Flash, sold for $450,000. We're getting into some really expensive comics here. We're getting into the half millions and millions. Uh, I just can't believe that there are some comic books that actually sold for this much. Now just keep in mind that these books that sold for this much were usually in high grade. Another one that I was really uh, surprised to see this high up in the list was X-Men number one, featuring the first appearance of the X-Men, sold for $497,000. Wow, and you know what's even crazy is that the X-Men weren't even that popular back then. The X-Men only became popular uh, nearing towards the 1970s when Chris Claremont took over the writing duties. Back then, when X-Men number one came out, they were just really not that great and not that popular. Batman number one in 2013 sold for $567,000. Now, this is not the first appearance of Batman, but this is the first Batman solo series, the first series that was dedicated specifically to Batman. For $936,000, All-Star Comics number 8 sold. And All-Star Comics number 8 is most famous for being the first appearance of Wonder Woman. She wasn't even on the front cover for this one. 
I've come to claim the law of surprise. Number four, I was really surprised to not see this comic book higher up on the list. But in our number four spot is Detective Comics number 27, which features the first appearance of the caped crusader, Batman. In 2010, this book sold for a whopping $1.075 million. Number three, really, really surprised to see this book so high up on the list, but that is Amazing Fantasy number 15. And this is a testament. This actually shows you that Spider-Man is indeed more of a popular superhero than Batman. Now, Batman is one of my favorite superheroes, and I always wondered, you know, who's more popular, Batman or Spider-Man? And this here just tells me that Spider-Man is the more popular of the two. Amazing Fantasy 15 is the first appearance of Spidey, and in 2011, it sold for $1.1 million in high grade. Number two, Action Comics, number one, sold for $1.5 million. Now, this particular copy of Action Comics number one that was sold was graded at CGC 8.5. And of course, in our number one position, the most expensive comic book of all time, again, is Action Comics number one. That is how sought after this book is. It is on this list twice. It holds the top two spots. Action Comics number one, at a CGC 9.0, which was the highest graded copy of Action Comics number one ever discovered, sold for a whopping $3.2 million. I actually remember when this uh, went up for auction, I believe it was in 2014, and people just went nuts over this book. It's actually really crazy to see that most of the records for these books were in the last about 10 years or so, so it's crazy how nuts people are going over comic books nowadays now if i were a sole collector trying to buy every single one of these comic books at similar grade right here right now i would need and i actually have to read this one because this is a really really weird number i would need 12 million three hundred seventy four thousand eight hundred sixty seven dollars and fifty cents to be able to buy every single comic book on this list today Anybody want to spot me a few? Pass a coin to your witcher, oh valley of plenty. So that about does it for our video today. Really, really hope you enjoyed it. I would really love to hear from you if any that are watching today actually own any of these uh, comic books. Because I can tell you right now, I do not own any of these. <laughs> I am, I, and I probably never will because I just can't rationalize spending that much on a comic book. But also because I probably will never have that amount of disposable income to spend on those comic books but if you're one of the those lucky few collectors that actually owns one of these would really love to hear from you in the comments and maybe you can leave your address and telephone number until next time this is dante d signing off i will see you all in the next episode